right, hello there again from uh, Little Creek Bee Ranch. We've, uh, we're wrapping up our <clears throat> brood box cutting project for the day. Lots of sawdust on the ground. You know, you've been doing something when you see piles of sawdust. Okay, so over in the trailer, we have all our ends that we cut. This would be the rabbit, the top, these are the sides. Uh, distance tall from uh, top down to the bottom is nine and five eighths, all right? Nine and five eighths. Okay, but I wanna show you, <coughs> that's around here, the spacers we cut, like we said we had cut off the uh, edges of the board. Oh, last year I almost chunked these because I wasn't sure what I was gonna do with the extra space. I thought, man, those would make great spacers. So. Here's, here's what I mean. See if I can do this this way. Get myself together here. Okay. So, they go together. Oh, yay. You know, okay, you get the idea. Some people don't know what I mean by spacers. Okay, so, Pretend that's glued and stapled together. Now, how thick is that? Well, let's see. We said uh, inch and a half. Is that about right? It looks like an inch, inch and a half. Okay. So uh, let's pull out the. So that means my uh, side panels are uh, 19 and an eighth. Yeah, 19 and an eighth. And the ends, the end boxes, you can figure this out on your own. The end boxes are uh, 16 and a quarter. The end panels, 16 and a quarter wide. Okay, so that's how we're cutting our boxes. But we get uh, out of this cut. Uh, we'll get 21 spacers now. You know, we've done previous cuts, so the spacers build up. I don't know how many spacers we got. Lots and lots and lots, 30, 40 or more. But that's okay, because we go through them and sell them and use them ourselves. Now, you can also, if you need more room, you just double up spacers, you know. So you don't have to pull out a shallow box and use for space for feeding sugar block or whatever. Spacers come in handy. Okay, so all these have been cut to... Uh, nine and five eighths tall, nine and five eighths, and I just gave you the length dimensions because these uh, side strips came off of that right there, right? So there's the spacers, and uh, oh, we have cooler weather, we'll put all those together. There's the side panels for uh, 21 brood boxes. Now see, the, there's no cuts, there's just, just simple, uh, an end cut, and a length cut and uh, nothing else fancy. All of our end work, all of our uh, rabbit work and corner work is done on the ends, on the ends, okay? The end panels, <laughs> moving around. There's a cut, there's a cut, there's a cut. So we just save ourselves some hand work by keeping all the cuts on the end and then we'll come back in here later and we'll put a nice D-shaped handle, a swooped D-shaped handle in there. You can go to bsource.com and look up uh, Handle Jig by Hogue, H-O-G-U-E. We made our own handle jig following his panter works good. Using a radial skill saw and coming down and cutting that out. Some of the safety inspectors may not like a radial saw being pulled sideways, but if you're careful, you know, common sense. And you can cut you a nice D-shaped handle out of there. <clears throat> so now there's 21 boxes cut out of uh, 1 by 12 by 10 foot planks. And uh, I've, the, my math says that after I've cut, it's $8.33 a piece just for material. I don't mind all the labor. It's my kind of my passion. And all those in the basket right there are all the spacers that will be on top. And uh, the, the bucket is full of all those little ends that we use as top spacing. And then that bucket over there will be used for 3 8 rails on bottom boards. See that? Now, 
where's the waste? Right, right down there. I guess if you want to scoop that up and use that as mulch in a flower bed, or you could do that too. Now some people, check this out. Some people will take this powdered sawdust and mix wood glue with it, ball it up, mix wood glue, and use it as a filler, a filler in some of the gaps, if you have a too big of a gap, and it makes for nice uh, filler for, for any pits, whatever, if you need some filler, some wood glue mixed with sawdust until it's kind of thick in dough consistency and push it in the corners and make some filler. So sustainable beekeeping takes on lots of different flavors and it's very, very different than traditional beekeeping. It's, I don't know how to explain it, just the way you do things. A lot of these things aren't just my ideas, but I've learned from senior beekeepers and put together a system of what we do and how we do what we do. Everything from on the spot queen rearing to hive management, to everything. And self-sustaining, solving queen problems, all self-reliant self-sustaining we didn't buy any queens this year we we didn't go off property and catch any swarms we caught seven on the property this year so far so all self-sustaining so yeah very cool man you know uh, you can learn how to cut your own boxes go to bsource.com left side build it yourself link and download free pdf files and dixie bee supply for some five dollar plans pretty cool stuff there you go I hope this helps somebody. Have an awesome day. It's hot out here, man.